Hello YouTube, I am back with another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to implement level of detail in Blender. So before we get started, let's just have a look at what we're going to have at the end of this tutorial. So whenever we play the game, we're presented with this sort of yellow sphere. We also can zoom in and zoom out with the scroll wheel on our mouse. Now if we zoom in to a certain point, we'll see it changes to a green sphere that is slightly more detailed. And if we zoom out further, it changes back to yellow, and then back to red. And something you can't actually see is that this is done based on where the camera is pointing. So for instance, if this camera is pointing away from that object, it will just stay as a red object. This makes it easier to make huge worlds, especially with forests with lots of trees in them. Whenever they're behind the player, you could actually turn them invisible if you wanted to, so that it doesn't hog down the CPU. So, to start implementing this, we go up to File, New. We're then going to split our 3D window. This new window is going to be a text editor. We're going to do text, open text block. And you're then going to open the script that is in the description. It should be named lod.py. Stretch up the bottom window a little bit. Switch to a logic editor. We are then going to add on the camera. With the camera selected, we're going to add a radar sensor. The angle is adjustable. We want to make it slightly bigger than the angle of the camera lens. So I'm going to make mine 50. And the distance is going to be whatever distance you want uh, to be the farthest whenever it switches to its lowest detail setting. So for this instance, I'm only going to do 10. You would probably want to do a little bit higher than that, though. And everything in this script is based off of this distance setting. So if you want to change how far away it starts getting detailed, all you have to do is change this number right here. In the property field, we're going to type in LO D so that we can specify which objects we actually want to change. The last thing we need to do is we need to name our sensor LOD in all caps, just like that, and turn pulse mode on. We can then minimize the sensor and add a Python controller. And then this Python controller is going to run LOD.py. So now we need to select our main object, in this case the cube. We're going to add the property LOD, and we're going to stretch out our properties menu over here. And in the mesh tab here, we need to name this something special. So you can see in the script here, there are three lines here. Detail 1 equals cube 1, detail 2 equals cube 2, and detail 3 equals cube 3. This is where we're telling the script what meshes we want to replace the object with. So for instance, Whenever this cube is really close up, we are going to replace it with whatever detail 1 is. Whenever it's in the middle distance, we'll replace it with whatever cube 2 is. And whenever we're at the third or farthest distance, we will replace it with whatever cube 3 is. So for this example, the cube is going to be our lowest detail. So in the mesh tab, we're going to name the mesh cube 3. Now if I wanted to do something other than cube, such as if I wanted to do a tree, I would do tree or tree 3, and then I would have to change that in the script here. So instead, I would type in tree 3. We're then going to need to add a few other objects, and it's usually best just to duplicate the object you have and make it more detailed as you go, uh, but if that's not a possibility, you can always use the decimate modifier. So for this example, I'm actually going to use the subdivision surface modifier to make it smoother. So I'm going to apply that modifier, and I'm then going to go to the Mesh tab, and I'm going to rename this. So since this is going to be our middle detail, I'm going to do Tree 2. I'm then going to duplicate again. I'm then going to go to the modifiers, add another subdivision modifier, and apply again. In the Mesh tab, I'm going to rename this to the final one, which is tree1. And I do have to update these over here in the script. So for example, instead of cube2, I'm going to do tree2. And instead of cube1, I'm going to do tree1. 
So the last thing we need to do is move these other objects, these excess objects, to a inactive layer. Select the cube, go to the physics tab, switch from Blender Render to Blender Game so we get the game buttons, and just check mark actor. As long as this is an actor, it should work. Actually, one problem yet is we need to change the axis in the radar sensor to the negative Z axis, which means it's going to be pointed away from the camera. So if we hit play, uh, nothing really happens. And I believe that's because the camera is currently too far away from the cube, so we can manually grab it in, hit play again, and we do see it snaps uh, to a new object right away. Now if we want to add the camera zoom so we can see what's going on in real time, we need to add two mouse sensors. The first one is going to be a wheel up with pulse mode on. The second one is going to be a wheel down with pulse mode on. We're then going to add two AND controllers and just wire those sensors into the controllers. And we're then going to add two motion actuators and wire them across. The first motion actuator is going to move on the z-axis by 1. The second one is going to move on the z-axis by negative 1. So if we hit play, we can now zoom out and zoom in. That's actually backwards. It should be 1 and then negative 1. And like I said before, if we want to change when it changes to a, between the different details, we can just change the distance here. So if I change this to 50, we play and we see now it's already a smooth object. And if we zoom out, we have to zoom out a lot farther before it starts changing. And that is how you can get level of detail in your game using Blender. So, thank you all very much for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.